<laughs> Get it raw. <clears throat> Get it raw. Get it raw. Raw. Get it raw. Good morning, Zumpark. Did it raw. Good morning, Zumpark. <laughs> I'm Bex. That was Mark, and we are GMC. 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 Oh, you're excitable tonight. I know. I've had a water. I've had a glass of water. <coughs> oh, is you dying, bruv? I've had a wine. Is you dying, though? I... Face buffered. <laughs> oh, we're going to carry on with that where we left off the other way. <laughs> Did we get... Uh, I can't... In it, though, mate. In it. Mm. I'm sure I'm sure the listeners... Don't be fucking coming up in my grill, bruv. Right, I'm, I'm sure the listeners do not want to continue with our Essex ass accent. So let's, let's try and be BBC. Let's be very posh um, okay i shall um yes. just talk like this for the rest of the night oh how jolly good of you i am finding it very difficult to do a posh accent because i am indeed the least posh person you shall ever meet that's quite good so though. this is very 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 difficult for me that's very good though you're doing a good job though what about those people? Oh, I can't even do it. I was going to try and do one of them Chelsea accents, but I can't. Uh, no, that's too far. It's a step too far. Your face is turning inside out if you chose like, to Darling, Chelsea. I just can't darling. believe that you have had so much filler in your lips. It's just atrocious. I think what you, in order to be a very posh accent, what you need to do is get an overbite. You need your teeth to feel like right, that. Right, right. Get an overbite. Get your teeth like right part out. Ah, ah, right, ah, get your teeth out, and then you have to look like you. Yes. They look like you're swallowing a wasp, oh. and then you can be posh. Oh, like, if you could only see my face <laughs> while I was doing this, see, you sound posh. You, sound you like would not time. be impressed. I feel like I look a little bit like Prince Charles. See, it's perfect. We've we've managed to sort that out. Um, so welcome everybody to GMC. I'm sure you feel like we are not an accent podcast we are not in case you hadn't noticed i know i know you're coming in and you're thinking wow it's like it's like an acting master class where did i sign up yeah. i didn't know but you know it's do i have to pay for this oh, quality do, am content I getting this for free? um but yeah you are this is for free so um welcome everybody to gmz um it's another episode of the world's number one zombie podcast <laughs> so first of all First of all, we were the UK's number one zombie podcast, mm. and then uh, last time we recorded, we were the UK's number one podcast, mm. and now we're the world's number one zombie podcast. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not 100% sure where Mark is getting these figures, but I think we should believe yeah, him. Yeah, th- th- I've been emailing with uh, an American politician who's, whose name I won't tell you but he tells me that we're possibly the best podcast he's ever heard um and and we're definitely is that because all he listens to is cheetos (laughs) yeah crunching he's really he's really happy with with what we're doing and he thinks that we are probably the world's best podcast he has no statistics but he thinks his gut is probably better than most people's well it's okay you don't need statistics as long as like somebody important usually a man says it Mm. everyone will believe him i am a white man of a certain age so i'm pretty sure everybody believes me um yeah i have a penis a penis i have a penis (laughs) yes i do Believe me, Believe me, I have and a penis. I wear a tie. So a penis and tie, two of the most perfect things to make everybody believe you. Therefore, everybody listens to what I say and believes oh, it. Do you know what? Do you know what would be the perfect storm to make everybody believe you? If you had, a, okay, if you had a penis, mm-hmm. a white skin, uh-huh. a tie, and, a, and uh-huh. a white doctor's coat. So you've got like three out of four of them. I know. If I got, well, I do have a. You just need to get the penis. <laughs> Oh, I see what you did. I see what you did. You made a joke about me not having a penis. <laughs> I see what you did. That's why you're the brains of this operation. And I'm just here on the stooge to be set up and pushed down. But that's fine. I, can... I thought that was pretty good considering I've had two glasses of wine. I thought that was pretty, that was pretty quick for the me. The more wine you have, the better you get, I hear. Um, <laughs> so anyway, welcome to our podcast. Um, this week we have an interview with um, an American no, not that American. Yes, a different he, American. He can't. Uh, he can't do a British accent like we can. Uh, no, because we're British. That's what. Yeah, and he's American. Yeah, just just bringing people's attention to it. <laughs> okay, so um, we have Sean Chesser, who's um, a really nice guy. He's an actual actual gent, um, and he's wrote 
millions of zombie books. Like 103 books, like, uh, I think, is Yeah, 4,632 books is what he's wrote. Um, was it not 17,365,217 books? No, that was it. That was how many books he's wrote. That's, it, it, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a, a lot. lot. Um, but obviously, you probably know him from the site Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse series, which is a really, it's a bestseller, um, and it's done fantastically well. Um, you know, he, he is up there... Um, with the Mark Tufos of this world in terms of, you know, um, doing fantastically well as, a, a, as an indie, you know, zombie author um, type of guy. So um, we got an interview with him and he, that, we do. He, he's a nice guy. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, before we get to that, um, let's talk a little bit about um, what's happening um, with GMZ lately. What is happening with GMZ? Is anything happening with GMZ? It's been so quiet. It's like a ghost town. Yeah. Yes, it's it, the thing with GMC is it like picked up for ages and it was yeah. really, really everyone was posting, everyone was interacting, and suddenly, like, it's like everyone's fucking died. Yeah, it's like an actual zombie apocalypse, which is fine, but I can live with that, that's fine. Um, but the, 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 the I think it might be some sort of new Mark Zuckerberg algorithm that's kind of you know defunct, uh, is that what's happened? defunct our Facebook. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to interact with you in different ways, but you know, we're still here. So if you're listening to the podcast, that's wonderful. If you can interact with us on Facebook, then you know. Fuck Zuckerberg, just get on there and do it. Um, if you, yeah, you know, yeah, fuck him, fuck him. It, it, do you know why it's happening? Is because we don't pay Zuckerberg any fucking money. No, we don't. We don't. I just nah, it, fucking dollar. <laughs> not not dollar Zuckerberg. Not dollar. Nah, dollar. <gasps> oh, I'm not sure that wasn't mildly racist what I just did there, but it's fine because it was an indiscriminate accent. It was just a showy accent. <laughs> it was just just yeah, shouting. Shouting. Okay. Um, like a German accent. So yeah, the, um, nothing much has been going on there. Uh, we have um, we have like a secret Santa thing going on, which is cool. I'm looking forward to people receiving their prizes and us receiving our, our not prizes. What do you get? You get like a Christmas presents presents. How, how does secret santa work again yeah <laughs> you, you you get a name yeah. and an address and you post some shit to them yeah okay cool so I, I posted two lumps of shit to my one so that's fine they should oh, that's okay then they, you say they got extra shit they got extra shit that's good oh that's amazing you're so generous i'm, I'm very kind um and then after Christmas in the new year, we have we're going we're going to London. Um, I'm going to be in London anyway because I live just up the road, um, and I'm going to meet some some Americans there, and hopefully we'll meet some of you guys <laughs> there as well. Um, so there's going to be a little London meetup where we can have a few bevies. Um, and then in the summer we're doing GMZ live again, so that's going to be really cool. And in the meantime, hopefully we can set up some other bits and pieces as well, Bex. What do you think? Not a lot, not any more meetups because I'm not driving anymore around the country. It's a pain. No. No, it's such a ball ache. Yeah, it is. I want people to come to me. Just, you know, just come to me and visit me. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to sleep on your sofa for like three weeks. No, don't do that. I'm I'm a terrible, terrible person to live with. Do you, as, as my wife not spoke to you about living with me. <laughs> yeah, but I think I'm worse. <laughs> it's going to be like a competition. Uh, my wife and your other half would be living perfectly comfortably together and happily and well. <laughs> me and you are just tearing <laughs> yeah. each other apart. <laughs> A competition who could be the biggest cunt in each other's house <laughs> oh, I tell you what we should have a vote if you're on the Facebook page go and vote and just say who do you think the bigger cunt would be yeah. me or Mark if we live together who do you think would drive the other person insane the most yeah you don't, you don't I feel like it'd be me you don't mind if like you know I just have a wank on the duvet and just leave it there do you <laughs> That's fine. No, because I won't be sleeping under it. You can sleep in your own ah, ejaculate. No. I, I don't, don't care. Get, I don't want to make my own duvet sticky. <laughs> well, don't go have a wank on my <laughs> duvet, you bloody pervert. <laughs> no, I have to... I have to um, so I was at uni today and we were doing some things on child development. And uh, have you ever read into Freud's theories? A little bit, yeah, a little bit about Freud. I mean, everything basically meant about having sex with your mother. That's basically yes. So I'm sitting there looking at the at these slides that this woman's presenting. It was very interesting, but I'm sitting thinking, Freud, you are a dick. Yeah, no, the biggest dick who had no fucking clue what you were on about mm. ever. No. So basically, he he was basically said that uh, between the age of zero of naught and one. Um, the, the baby's erogenous zone, because you apparently you have erogenous zones when you are two months mm. old, uh, is in their mouth. 
What? So if you if you um, stimulate this erogenous zone in a baby through their mouth, then they are more likely to smoke and um, binge drink and um, like eat a lot of food, you know, like overindulge and things like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, but you have to feed a fucking baby through the mouth, Freud. Like, do you want yeah. me to like intravenously feed my child? Mm. Hey, do you know what Freud had no clue to avoid this erogenous zone? He had no clue though. I mean, um, it's amazing that we held him up as this candle of you know psychology for so long um well that's it. apparently he's still quite well revered in the psychology world um yeah not not like people i'm not sure why because i'm not sure where the evidence is behind mm. his theory yeah I, I, it, was, I guess, it was very strange i mean he had a weird relationship with his mother which obviously accounts for a lot of the, the theories behind what he, he had to say um, yeah, he said between the age of three and five, all children um, develop a weird sexual desire for their mothers and their fathers are in the way of that. So they try and fight their father mm. and then they eventually accept their father and, and work with him rather than against him. I'm like, what are you talking about, you utter cock? Yeah, I don't think he knew what he was talking about. I'm going to be I'm going to just throw no. that out there. I'm not an academic. I'm just going to say Freud's a twat. I'm going to leave that yeah. with that. But then I think... But it's just, I don't know how I got onto that. It was just because you were being a bit of a yeah. creep. And I think Freud's a bit of a creep. Oh, so me and Freud get on. That would be yeah, fun. Yeah, you would get on. That's you'd, like... You have some... You'd, yeah. My wife, my wife once made um, what she thought was a compliment and was actually one of the best insults I've ever had. A bit like what you just <laughs> did there, where you were sort of saying, oh, you know, Freud's a arsehole and a pervert and then you compared him to me um my wife yep. did something very similar so she we was watching sherlock holmes on the tv um the, you know the new one with benedict let's say new one the one with benedict cumberbatch um uh-huh. we was watching it and she said oh you remind me of sherlock holmes the benedict cumberbatch virgin and i'm thinking that's cool he's a very you know he's a tall guy he's very handsome he's very you know charming and he's, there's, there's lots of nice things to say about benedict cumberbatch in in sherlock holmes and she went yeah mm-hmm. you're a bit of an arsehole as well <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Just a bit of an asshole. Yeah. So I thought, thanks. That's the worst compliment, or the best compliment. I don't know what it was. It was like the worst, best compliment. It was like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. But I took it. I took it. That's fine. Um. Okay. So I guess rather than babbling on, we should get on to our guest. Should we get on to our guest? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, let's get Sean on the phone. Sean. Sean. <laughs> Um, so this week we have with us uh, Sean Chesser, who's uh, from the US, who's uh, a prolific author. Um, most of you guys probably know him already, um, but obviously I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Hey, how are you doing, Mark and Rebecca? Yeah. My name's but... Sean Chesser. Uh, I write a series called Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse. I've got a new series. I'm, I'm pinning book two right now. I'm almost finished with it, actually, called Riker's Apocalypse. Right. So, I mean... Um, most of our listeners probably know who you are because you're, you're you've done a lot of books in this series now. I mean, how many are you up to on the Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse series? Let's see. I published Gone, which is book thirteen, uh, July eleventh. Wow. Thirteen. Yeah, book two of uh, Records Apocalypse. I'm almost done with the with the first draft, so that, that'll be a January release. Okay. So that'll be fifteen books under the belt, and I'm I'm in a couple of anthologies as well, and I, I've written for a magazine here in the states. Um, other than that, that's that's the only published stuff. How long has it taken you to get to that many books? How long have you been writing for? I generally uh, write a book in three or four months, a month to polish it up and, and with the editor and beta readers, and then it's published. So generally about a, a book every six months, um, unless, you know, sometimes the summer slows me down. It takes seven <laughs> months when the kids are out of school. You know, it's a little bit yeah. different. Um, sure. Good going, though. Yeah, it's very good going. Uh, Sean, I, I was looking at your website um, a little while ago, and, and I saw that you, you, you've you studied at one of the best, um, what we would call a university, I guess you call it a college, uh, one of the best universities in the US. Did, you, um, it's a joke. Harvard on the Hill is what we call our community uh, <laughs> I know, I've been asked that a couple of times. Harvard on the Hill is what they call Portland Community College because it's up on Sylvan Hill. Right. That makes Sorry. perfect sense. Yes. <laughs> that's wonderful. No. I actually, that you know, I think that's a brilliant joke. That's the, that's the sort of thing. <laughs> he was impressed a little for a bit there. 
I, mean, I yeah, I was like, it's unusual for a, a you know a zombie author to 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 have that sort of academic background. Um, I mean, how did you get into writing zombies in the first place? Where how did it all start? I've always been a fan of zombies. I um, saw the Night of the Living Dead when I was twelve on v VCR VHS, and was hooked since then. That was nineteen eighty, and um, I've you know I. I, I I wasn't really, I wrote for myself when I was younger, derailed for a number of years due to uh, choices that I made, let's just put it that way. And um, I started writing Trudge uh, in 2010 as a kind of a, uh, I call it an exercise on trying to finish something that I finally start, that I started, which I, I'd had a problem doing until that, that point in my life. And while my boy Cade, who is the, my protagonist, Cade Grayson, his name is Caden Gray Chesser, so Cade Gray my son, that's how I got the name for him. Mm -hmm. Well, he was playing an indoor park here in Portland, which is this uh, a rainy environment, as you probably know. Um, I would watch him playing on the trikes and whatnot, and I would sit in the bleachers and write scenes on my iPhone on the yellow pad. And I would take those and email them to myself, cut and paste them into a document. And finally, after a few months, I had that you know, 60, 70,000 word uh, novel finished. And it's not really a, kind of a short novel. But, um, you know, I was just for me mainly. And I thought maybe my mom would take a look at it or my, my wife or whatever, you know, it's for the kids too. Um, but, you know, I sh showed it to a friend at work and, and he was an English major and he, he says, you know, it's, it's pretty decent, you know. It, it's not great sentence structure, that first book. Um, but he, he said the dialogue was good and your characters are good and you developed them a little bit. And, you know, he, he says, good job. So it kind of propelled me to show it to some other people. And I carried around this big bunch of paper it wasn't on a disc or anything mm -hmm. and um and a couple of people liked it so i've and another person told me about smashwords and that's kind of how it, it became a book on you know for the masses to read sure I mean, it's a hell of a way to write your first novel isn't it in your notes on your phone <laughs> well, i would a... recommend it because <laughs> once i got the document finished and smashwords it has this thing called meat grinder which mm -hmm. formats it for you it didn't mm -hmm. like it. you have to go yeah. back and reformat it a certain way and that that as you know, I told you I'm not very tech savvy when it comes to these things. That, that, I was pulling my hair out when I did that. I, I mean, imagine. to fair, anything that I kind of write, if I get a little bit of flash of inspiration, it, it just just go on my phone because your phone goes everywhere with you, doesn't it? So you yeah. have a flash of inspiration at the supermarket and you can just write it down on your phone. It's great. But then, yeah, it's, it's a formatting issue, like you were saying. Well, when you're at the wheel, though, and you, you think of something, you're like, ah, No, don't do that. Can I <laughs> When can I pull over and put this down? Nine times out of ten, I'm 50 years old now. I'll, I'll forget some of it. And it's like, Arr, that's that's annoying. I like wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I think, shit, I've got to write that down. And there it goes in my iPhone notes. It's a great tool. I've done that as well. Half the time when I write something down on paper, my, my chicken scratch is not very legible. I think I was maybe a doctor in a past life or something. <laughs> Me too. Oh, I know that pain. Yeah. Um, Sean, I, I have a question. Obviously, um, you, your zombie series is uh, pretty pretty um, heavy on the military uh, <laughs> on on the covers. Anyway, they're they're, they're pretty heavy on the on the military. Uh, have you served? Are you you know? Have you, I have, have you... not served. No, I, I have family members that have. I yep. have a few readers and friends that that uh, look at my books and correct me where I'm wrong. Some of the things they tell me to correct, I leave just for you know the purpose of you know excitement but you know not major things uh i totally my family and i were, were big big believers in uh back in the military and i always have and i always will especially law enforcement and you know anyone that, that protects the thin blue line yeah of course <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean we have. Um, I mean, it's it's unusual because we, when we interview people whose books are quite military based, it's because they have been in the military themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's good that you have some people around you that can, I say, almost like fact check. I can bounce stuff off people, but you know, I want to set the record straight. Though my my books are not full on military. Uh, no, no. A, Grayson is is former operator and he's been out for a few a, a while and the, the the zombie apocalypse happens and he has to you know get to his like they all most books start out this way series he has to get to his family who's on the on the road and and but there's two different groups there's two story arcs well more than two but two main story arcs is Cade gets drawn back into the military his family they're they're in a compound in Utah and they're they're normal people so there's a lot of normal people that get drawn into this they get drawn in from all over the United States so that's kind of fun writing from perspective and it, it's the the females are are not weak in the knee they're not you know damsels in distress they're they're not <laughs> super soldiers either i don't go that route but i try to write realistic in my characters and you know all all um ethnicities pretty much are, are um 
added in my books. I don't gloss over anybody and the, the guys don't always win the day and the women don't always win the day. I kind of like, like that even balance. There's even a dog in my series finally. So I guess I'm sure. checking most. You're, right. you're checking all the right buttons with our podcast. You know that. Yes. <laughs> you're making sure that you include a little bit, you know, a little bit of everything in a dog that just ticks all of our right boxes. That's right. it. Everyone's going to read you now just for the dog. <laughs> if you else. add a cat in, I think um, you've a cat, got a winner. There, there have been some cats, but they're mostly for all and not uh, pets. But that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> the next, we the next add, like a smart cat in there and our, our listeners will just go nuts. Right. My boy is devouring these books where the cats are the, they're like, uh, they talk and they they do things. So maybe I can get some advice from him. He's 12. Yeah, yeah. 12. <laughs> um, Sean, I have a question. Um, I'm just, I'm looking at your website. Um, I was looking at it earlier this evening as well. And I I really like the cover arts on, on, on your books. It's like you have this common theme of cover art. It, have you recently had it all redone? It all, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. Well, I'll tell you, 20, 2014, I shared a table at the World Horror Convention with mm-hmm. uh, Mark Tufo. Some of you may know him. Yep. And a fellow named Ron O'Brien. I'm sure you all know him. He's from yep. Seattle. He's up north of me. Um, we shared the table for three days, and, and I got to looking at other people's covers. And I was um, – John O'Brien, uh, he um, told me the name of his fella, and he introduced me to his guy that did some of his co- covers. And um, he, Straight 8 uh, Photography is doing all my covers now. His mm-hmm. name's Jason Swar. He's a veteran. He served. The guy that stands in for Cade Grayson on my covers, his name is Aaron, and he is a veteran, uh, a combat veteran. He's got uh, I don't know how many thousands of jumps. He's a you know parachutist and all this stuff. And um, so I try to you know we, we keep it real that way. Yeah. But Straight Eight does all my covers, and I it's amazing how they'll take my idea. And the first uh, first draft I get back, rarely do we change anything. I mean, he nails it every single time. And I actually just posted uh, an Instagram post onto my Facebook that Jason Swar describes on how he shoots the, the models. I just stumbled across it on his Instagram feed, and so I figured I'd share it with my readers. It, it, they're really nice. I mean, and I think the good thing for me, obviously, apart from the realism, because I think the realism is, is fantastic, what you've just described there. But the, the, the other thing for me is there's a, there's, you have a common image and a common brand across your books. I think one of, one of the things I find with some authors um, is, you know, they have lots of series in lots of directions. And, and it, you, sometimes when you're scrolling for Amazon or something, you don't know what you, you miss. But with yours, you're, it, that's never going to happen because it's obviously a Sean Chesser book just from the cover, you know, which is mm. really nice to have your own identity, your own brand. Brand, which I think is fantastic. Um, yeah, we try to keep them similar. That's that's one thing we wanted to do uh, from the get go. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, Mark Tufo, as you said, does the same thing. I know, you know, when you scroll for Amazon, you can see Mark's books from a mile off. They just yeah, sort of yeah, jump you never off the miss page them. And, you never miss them. Yeah, and it's, it's a very the covers after about book four or five is when I started doing that, and uh, yeah. I've been using them ever since. They're great. It's a it's a fantastic thing to do. So, um, you were talking about your your characters and the you know the people in your stories and and, and you know and how you develop them. Um, I guess you know I I, I don't want to get political because you know we're, we're, the, but <laughs> we're not it, a political. Podcast. We're not a political. No, no. Generally, we muck around. Um, but I mean, it, America, America and the and the UK are both in this sort of thing at the moment where we're sort of we we're, we're split pretty much we're down the middle. The we're quite shit. Yeah, well, we're all we're all kind of split, aren't we, down, down the middle? Um, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, are, are you trying to introduce some of those um, topics that are, you know, we're, we're discussing in the news and we're seeing in the media? Are you, are you discussing some of that in your stories with your characters? Well, the, my STZA not, uh, series is set in 2011, so right. w- what I've done in my new series is in 2016, and I, I I I've learned from my grandma that I don't talk about religions and, or politics. Yep. Unless I'm at the dinner table with my family or with friend, good friends. So yep. I, I've kept most of that out of my books. The, the first mm-hmm. couple of books, um, I kind of described the mindset of my character a little bit. My character's eh, kind of leaning to the right. But I've taken care that the only people that really get eaten in the political spectrum are all of them. I, I, I'm an equal opportunity um, <laughs> yeah. um, sure of, of politics, both sides of the aisle in my books. And if anyone's read through, I think, book four – they'll see what becomes of most of those uh, elite, the class that we're talking about. I, I, I suppose I, if you if you overly talk about religion or politics or any of those kind of topics in your books, you risk alienating 
a, a part of your readership that may not come back to your books. And you know what? I I don't care what someone thinks. I I don't I I I know what I think, and I don't really base judge someone on on their beliefs. You know, it's it's the mm. content of your character, how you treat me. I I believe in the golden rule. I've said yeah. this on a couple of different podcasts. You know, treat someone how you want to be treated, and yeah. things will be okay. I mean. My wife likes to say, you know, if I'm complaining about one little tiny thing, which I've done before, uh, is this going to matter in 20 years? Is this a mountain mm-hmm. molehill? I'm like, yeah, that's a good way to approach life and approach writing because that is a good way. You know, oh, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, we got to. I'm not going to alienate half of my readers because of something that I believe, and I'm not going to exclude something in the books that might be pertinent just because I might alienate someone as well. You know, I, I use some language. I use. Um, I have a character use the N word, not in a not a white character, but not, well, he was a bad guy. But you know, it just it, you yeah. have to be real with it, and he got his for doing it. So mm. I don't know. I just play the movie in my mind, and and what comes out on the paper is what comes out. Yeah, That's I mean, a good, it's, good place um, to be. I think. It, I mean, it, it, with true character development, you, you know, people will become people. You know, in your you, there are good people and there's bad people and there's every shade of grey in between. You know, so exactly. uh, and if you're you know if you're really developing characters properly on the page, then you're going to have every shade of grey. So you know, mm-hmm. it, it's irrelevant their beliefs. Um, I love to throw curveballs where you describe somebody a character that that shows up, and then maybe in the readers, you're trying to make the readers in their mind's eye think that this may be a bad person. And then mm. totally switch it around on them by actions, and and I like to do that, keep them on their toes. I I have a suspicion, and you have to correct me if I'm wrong. I have a suspicion that you're one of those writers who doesn't plan anything. You just start writing. I'm a, I'm a total pantser. I I kind of know where I want the ending to be. <laughs> I, yeah. Nine times out of ten, I know the title of my book before. I have only changed one title from beginning to end and uh, that was i think book two uh, because i changed the series name i was going to call it trudge the series trudge Mm. so that's why my the the things are backward but then i decided surviving surviving the zombie apocalypse is a better sounding series name than trudge so the second book went from war war footing to soldier on which (laughs) followed nicely after trudge trudge soldier on so that that's how that that came about but generally i do i do um I fly by the seat of my pants, exactly. <laughs> the best way yeah. to do life. I mean, characters I, I, dictate where you're going half the time. I mean, you got your writers, you know that's The characters sometimes will just take the, the helm and, and tell you where you're going. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a planner. I'm a compulsive planner. I have to plan every right. little detail. Um, but I know some of my favorite writers are not. I mean yourself and we had uh, obviously we've had ricky fleet on here loads of times and he, he doesn't plan a thing he just writes um right. and and i think people like that I, I love people like that where they just you know they they can just jump into the page jump into the characters um and you kind of take us along for the ride don't you you know when you're reading a series like that you're sort of you're along for the roller coaster whatever's going to happen um yeah it's linear for sure i i've been you know accused of compressing um <laughs> too much story into too little time i mean the zombie apocalypse has only been ongoing for a hundred days by book 14. I'm going to have a time for book 15. There's going to be a time jump and a location change due to what happened at the end of book 13. So book 14, excuse me, of STZA will have a time jump, but you know, it's just, just every book comprises of two or three days in the zombie apocalypse. And uh, that's just how I write. Do you, um, do you find yourself when you're going about your daily business, do you find yourself living in the zombie apocalypse in your mind? Like, um, you know, on to the next book or still working on the current book you're currently working on in your mind when you're supposed to be taking the children to school or something? Oh, I was reading. Well, not so much when I'm trying to take the kids to school or whatever, but on when I'm writing, I, I'm, it's nice to write in a second, second uh, universe now. So I'm writing in this new universe at 2016 with, different zombies there's fast and slow zombies a different set of circumstances that started the apocalypse and it's a lot slower moving book one a trudge of stza you're thrown in the apocalypse right there well book one called the promise of Riker's apocalypse it's a slow burn start and now in this one the plan they're they're seeing the effects of the apocalypse and by book three the prof the, the it's going to be called the precipice it's going to be full-blown so it's kind of kind of nice to write in this different style but as i'm doing it i'm writing this book that last night i was writing uh you know this this manuscript and i started thinking about the next book in my other series and it's mm-hmm. kind of difficult to to get involved in that but i want to go i so much want to go back to that stza series and get back into that universe because i i'm so attached to it so is it not told- finished then? Oh no, the STZ is not finished. Book after gone, thirteen not- books. 
books. <laughs> 13 books. You know, I, uh, so one of my favorite authors is Lee Child. You probably know who he is. He's a mm -hmm. native of your country. Um, he's a pantser also, and he's on book 19 or 20. I'm not saying I'm like him, but mm -hmm. his Jack Reacher books span a couple of days each, and Jack yeah, Reacher no, that's true. over the series. And as long as my readers keep wanting the books, I mean, as soon as, you know, Gone comes out a week after, I'm not too mm -hmm. my own arm, but this is true. People hit me up on private message or direct message and say, dude, when's the next book coming out? You know, or <laughs> yeah. media. And so they're, they're, as long as people want to read them, I'll probably That's when keep you know you're on to a winner. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think of these, um, you know, the George R. R. Martins or, you know, these, these guys who uh, there's massive years and years and years gaps between their, their, their works. Do you, do you think that's excessive or do you think that's just how, their, their process? Well, you know, I feel so sorry for the readers because mm -hmm. they, they want to get back into that universe and see what's going on. Um, I guess George R. R. Martin has to have uh, disclaimers when he does interviews like this or whatnot that he's not to be asked when uh, I think it's is it, what's the next one called? Um, ooh, I can't think of it. Yeah, I can't anyway, think of it either. Yeah, yeah. It's been that long. <laughs> he's getting the Winds asked, of Winter. Yeah. Yes, Winds of Winter. He's getting asked about it nonstop. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm here waiting for jack lee child's next jack reacher book out uh, a month after it comes out and i'm reading it, he puts one out every year and that seems like an attorney to me so i couldn't imagine waiting that long you know for for, uh, to, for my character no i'm literally over here now feeling very depressed because you've just reminded me that i've still not read <laughs> winds of winter because it's not bloody out <laughs> right right um the one book i'm waiting for the details the Tyrion lannister family the whole lineage that's his latest work, but you know what? When you're George R. R. Martin, you got all that. He's he's super wealthy. He can do whatever he wants. I'm yeah, sure. he can do do whatever he wants. Pace right now. Um, Sean, before we before we end the interview, um, could you tell our listeners where they can find more information about you if they don't know already? Do you have a website, Amazon page, stuff like that? Yeah, I have a website, www.seanchester.com. I believe there's links to my social media there. Um, I have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook author page. Uh, you can search Pale Writers, uh, Sean Chester's Pale Writers. That's my um, my uh, Facebook, they call it a fan page that some lady, Lisa Long and Annie, um, set up for me. And uh, I can't think of anything. I have an Amazon page, of course. Uh, it's all out there. The Twitter handle is at SD Chess. I'm on Instagram, Sean Chester Author. Hope that covers it. You're everywhere. You're all over you the are. world. I'll make sure that all <laughs> of the... I yeah, kicking and screaming in 2010. I'll let you know. So it was... <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that all of the links are in the description oh, to the podcast. Thanks. So they're all there. Um, I'm going to join your Facebook group because I, I don't think I'm a member. So I'll join that when we get off the phone. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on, Sean. It's, uh, it's really, yeah, really generous you. to spend your time with us. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, having me on. I appreciate it. Thank no, you, thanks sir. for the chat. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. 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 So that was uh, Sean. 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 I'm calling him that. That was that was <laughs> Sean. 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 That was Sean. Ricky. Sean. No, that's a different person. Different Sorry. Person. That was Sean Chesser from the good old United States of America, which is, you know, for for those Englanders who are not sure where the United States of America are, then you you, you get to Ireland and you just keep going. <laughs> right. Okay. Is that how you get there? That's how you get there. You just walk. You don't have to walk. There's just lots walk of to places. Ireland and then just keep going. No, no, I'm not saying you have to walk. I'm just saying that's the direction. So if you're in that's England direction. and you go towards Ireland and you just keep going, that's how you get Can there. Can you not, like, go to France and then keep going? You could, yeah. You could do There's lots of ways. There's, you know, it's a big place. It's a big place. There's lots of ways. Yeah, yeah. You can. Anyway. But so, yeah, Sean was, a, Sean was a great guy. He was yeah. awesome. That was a really good interview. I really enjoyed that. He has written fuck loads of books. Fuck loads. That is the official... That um, is the term. official measurement. So it, yeah. The official measurement is fuckloads. It's fuckloads, yeah. That's how many he's wrote. So that, that you yeah. know, he's a really nice guy as well. I mean, um, we we've had lots of American authors on over the years, um, and you know, sort of like when when you speak to them, you, you realise that uh, you know uh, there isn't a lot of difference between the US and the UK. We're all very very similar, aren't we? In terms of our yeah, you know, it's the, just the accent. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, and the fact they've got Donald Trump as a president. Yeah, you know they've got two arms, two legs, and a head like we have. You know, they're, they're all, you're not all of them. Some of them haven't, and 
anyway, I'm getting into some... Some British people don't have two arms and two legs. I know, I know. I realised what I said, but... Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, they got an eye. No, they both got two eyes. No, because not everybody's got two eyes. They could have two ears, um, but they might have had one bitten off. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works. Anyway, some people get born with webbed feet, so it looks like they've only got one toe. Yeah. Some people yeah. are born with extra fingers. It's just, yeah, just... They're basically the flesh, flesh and blood. Yeah, we're all made of the same biological component. We're all made of stardust. Um, no, we're not made of stardust. We are made of stardust. That is wrong. <laughs> we're not made of stardust. <laughs> well, that's Science. What that's what I was taught when I was in school. <laughs> they said... It's wrong. They said, Mark, you're special. You're made of stardust, you know. And I said, am I? And they said, yes, Mark, you're a special wee man. And I said, thanks. That's what happened. That's how, that's how I know it to be true. Okay, you just keep believing that. Just go in and sit in your special corner and... Thank you. Anyway, that. Um, so yeah, that was Sean. It was uh, wonderful to have him on. Um, we shall, we've got more interviews coming up um, in the run-up to Christmas. Um, we do. No doubt. Um, do, do we... Who have we got? Hang on, let me just get my calendar up. Oh, So, next out. week... Oh no, shit, hang on. It's not on my calendar. Ah! <laughs> Oh, that's because it's on I've my got Facebook. Them, I've got the master calendar. That's why. That's because when I had an iPhone, it would like share it with me. We had a synced calendar, Bex and I. We we did. Can I not have a synced I, calendar with I, my Samsung? No, we might be able to do it with like Gmail or something. Um, yeah. So next week we have Suzanne Sussex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking love Suzanne Sussex. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. So she's on. I think she's got a new book out. So no doubt we'll talk about that. Um, with Suzanne Sussex, no doubt we'll obviously divert onto various other subjects that are not about bookage. Um, but the main yeah, because point... um, that's how it always goes with us and Suzanne. Yeah, it is. But the main point of obviously the interview will be to promote her new bookage. Um, her bookage, which is not it's not a bad thing, you know. I like I like it when people have stuff out, like new out, because it's, yeah, I think it's it's good for them and it's good for us. It's good for them to come on and go, yeah, look, this is out, and then like the, our listeners then go buy that. So I think that's yeah. a cool thing. Um, I'm going to be doing some more giveaways in the run up to Christmas. I gave away a book the other day in the Facebook group. I gave away one, uh, the Queen Dead, I signed one that I signed and Duncan Bradshaw signed, um, and I'm going to be doing some more. Um, so I'm going to give one away give one away probably next week and then another one so you try and get a couple out the door before christmas so people get a little prize and stuff so i'll be doing that um a- anything else to talk to people about bex no we did it all in the intro we did we did then so we recovered all our bases um have you yes. any any new impressions this week i know last time you was here you did tom <coughs> Hyde, which was very very good have you anything um that you could add maybe um, it dep- what, what would you like me to do? And I, I will do my best to, to interpret it. Um, can you do uh, Mary Poppins? Um, the classic 60s uh, Disney movie, Mary Poppins. No, because I've never seen it. You've never seen Mary Poppins? What, have you been mm-hmm. living under a fucking rock? Have you never... What's, what's happened there? You, you... I wasn't born in the 60s. <gasps> Neither was I! But I've still seen Mary Poppins. Have you seen Dumbo? Yes. <laughs> it's the one with the elephant. You remember it? Yes. No, I have seen Dumbo. Yeah, okay. Well, what about um, what about Pinocchio? Have you seen Pinocchio? I have seen Pinocchio. Yeah, right. Okay. So why, how comes you miss Mary Poppins? I don't know. Ask my mum. Did you see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Uh, yeah, I think I did, but I can't really remember it. Okay. All right. So um, what I want you to do is to pick a classic children's film from your era then, not from my era. So um, what would be a classic children's film from your era? Um, classic children's film from my era. I don't know. How, I, how young are you? Like The Incredibles? <laughs> um, no, I'm not that young. Okay, cool. Um, make... You're talking from my era. You're talking like Lion King. Oh, do a Lion King impression. That's good. Lion King. Go on. There's lots you can do there. Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. <laughs> it's good. You did um, James <laughs> L. Jones. It was good. Good. That was really good. Can you do James L. Jones as Darth Vader as well? Wow, that was 
I mean, you're not getting a round of applause for that one because that wasn't very good. But, it, you know, it was, it was entertaining. It was... Oh, just, just like, you know, fucking wreck my dreams. Why don't you? <laughs> well, you, you, you know where you come on the grand, grand scale of impressions on podcasts. You're right at the top there. We're the number one podcast in the universe, don't forget. So, obviously, you, you know, you're the number one impressionist on podcasts. Obviously, yes. Yeah. Um, and I feel you know it's really well done. I think this should become a regular segment of our show. Um, what can, just Bex's his impression? What can Bex do an impression of? Yeah. Um, and <laughs> if you would like to send us an email, it's wineandgills at gmail dot com, um, or you can come onto the Facebook page or the Facebook group, and you can um, tell us what you want Bex to do an impression of next time we're on the podcast. Um, and yeah. We could you know maybe get a little list going, and Bex could make it. You know, Bex could just you know don't tell Bex though. Just send them directly to me, um, and I'll keep them secret because if she has time to. Pray practice i think that's going to ruin the you know the the, the inspiration as it comes you know on, on the but what if i don't know an impression and then i can't do it like mary poppins how the practice. fuck don't you know mary poppins I'm, I'm do you mean like now children just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down like that yes that's exactly i can mary, do that that's mary poppins yes yes okay so you have seen it in the most delightful way. <laughs> yeah, I probably have seen it like once, but I yeah. can't think of what she says as like a quote. I know the song because yeah. it's like everywhere. Yeah, it's good. You did well. You did well. See, you did Thanks. it. See, there, I don't think there's any, there's, there's no hurdle that you cannot leap like a... There's no accent. There yeah. is no impression that I cannot do. Challenge yeah. me, GMZ. That's right. So, Challenge Bex is next week. <laughs> oh my God, she's doing the... It's very disconcerting when you're breathing in my ear. <laughs> it's unpleasant. Look, I am your father. Oh, I really? Oh god, that's a worry. <laughs> it's unusual. It's unusual. I, do you know? It's it. I, it's it's a very intimate thing when you podcast with someone because they're right in your ear hole, aren't they? They're right up in your <laughs> ear hole. And then when they someone's, someone's heavy breathing right into your ear hole and speaking into you, it can be disconcerting, can't it, Bex? Like when they get right up in your ear hole. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, anyway, so that's the end of uh, this week's episode. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Um, the links to all Sean Chester stuff will be in the description. I'll post it up. Um, as soon as I can um, and thanks for listening thanks Bex for being a wonderful host thanks to Sean um, for yeah. being a wonderful guest and thank me for being me bye bye <laughs> bye <laughs>